This video will cover Reclaim 101 basics on properly designing and setting up a pure water reclaim system in underground tanking. Pipe connections, electrical connections, and basic water flow will be presented to allow you to better understand the operation of reclaiming water. Pure water does not supply the tanks, but they are typically precast concrete faults that are sourced locally. There are many different configurations of tanks that are available. Whether they are side by side or straight in a line, the connections and water levels will still remain the same. You should also consider the location of the tanks. Try to locate the tanks as close as possible to the reclaim system to minimize the length of the suction line. Now let's look at typical reclaim tank dimensions. Sunny's recommended tanks are about 12 feet long, 6 feet deep, and about 4 to 6 feet wide. This would allow the inside to be about 5 feet long, 6 feet deep, and around four to five feet wide in each chamber. Using these dimensions, this would give us about a thousand gallons per chamber or 2000 gallons for one tank. Using three tanks, this would give us about 6,000 gallons of total storage. Still using the example of needing three tanks, the water in this case is entering from the left side and exiting to the right. The water entering the tank on the left side is considered tank 1, followed by tank 2, and the last being tank 3, or sometimes referred to as the suction tank. The first two tanks should have a baffle which creates two compartments per tank. The baffle should go from the very top to the very bottom of the tank. This will help separate the solids and keep the floatable material closer to tank 1. Here we will discuss the piping connections on the tanks. All of the connections should be Schedule 80 PVC. First we have two 6 inch pipe connections that are feeding the wash water into the first tank, second chamber. Next we have our underflow line that is connected to the first tank, first chamber. All of the interconnects between the tanks and baffles are 6 inch. The recirculation line, or ozone line, is plumbed into the second tank, first chamber. You will have two 4 inch sewer connections, one in the second tank and one in the third tank. Please take note that the sewer connections require a backflow preventer to prevent unwanted sewage from backing up into the reclaimed tanks. Two 3-inch suction lines are placed in the last tank, one for spare and one for use. And lastly, a 1-inch conduit for a low-level float. Let's take another look at the connections. The underflow line brings back solids to the first tank, first chamber. Your wash water connections are plumbed into the first tank, second chamber. Now we have our first 6 inch interconnect which has drop down pipes to prevent floatable materials from passing through. Once more we have a second interconnect which is at a high level with drop downs. The recirculation line or ozone line plumbs into the second tank, first chamber. While solids are still settling, once more we have a third high-level interconnect. Now connecting tank 2 and 3 together is a low-level interconnect. You will have two 4-inch sewer connections, one in the second tank and one in the third tank. Two suction lines are plumbed into the last tank and a float connection.
The reclaim system is built on a small footprint. It measures 4 feet wide, just over 7 feet tall, and 16 inches deep. For those of you who do not have a large bay door in the equipment room and have a standard door, the reclaim system's ozone cabinet can be flipped down so you can easily push the reclaim system through the door without having to tip the equipment. After removing two bolts, the ozone cabinet can be flipped via its hinge. Once you get the equipment into the room, you can flip the ozone back over and replace the two bolts. Be sure to be gentle while flipping the cabinet. The ozone cells within the cabinet are fragile. When the ozone cabinet is flipped down, it measures 4 feet wide, about 6 feet tall, and just over 2.5 feet wide. There are five plumbing connections to be made on the reclaim system. A suction line, a recirculation line, an underflow line, a freshwater or city connection, and lastly, the reclaim water out to the wash equipment. All of the reclaim plumbing should land on the right side of the reclaim system. You will have a suction line, a spare suction line in the case that there is an issue with the other, a recirculation line, an underflow line, and a conduit for a low level float connection. On the wall or close to the reclaim system you will need a fresh water connection, and lastly the product water or reclaim water line that will feed to your washer applications. Do not reduce this line size until reaching the wash equipment to prevent flow restriction and pressure reduction. The reclaim system is pre-wired and is pretty close to a plug and play design. A single phase connection is required, also a three phase connection. The low level float connection is terminated on terminals 1 and 2. You will need at least one activation from the wash to tell the reclaim system you are demanding reclaim water. This can land on any of the three activations. Terminals 3 and 4 are the first activation, terminals 5 and 6 are the second, and terminals 7 and 8 are the third activation. You can also wire more than one activation. To review, the single phase power can either be 110 VAC or 220 VAC. Three phase power can be 208 230 VAC, 460 or 575 VAC. There is one float connection and at least one voltage activation from the wash is required. This can be 24 volt DC, 24 volt AC, 110 volt AC or 220 volt AC. Choosing your chemistry while reclaiming water is important. The compatibility with reclaim water and your chemistry should not be overlooked. Two items we don't want in reclaim water are MSO or mineral seal oil, and silicone from tire shine applications. Please refer to your chemistry provider and discuss your options of using reclaim friendly chemicals. If you have a tunnel with a tire shine, we want to prevent the tire shine from entering the reclaim tanks and mixing with the water. Most, but not all, tire shine chemicals have silicone in the product, which ends up making a goopy mess of the reclaim water. Since it is hard to remove, we recommend placing a dam within the trench and allowing the tire shine slash water mix to drain out to a sewer connection. 
If you have a water softener, the brine discharge should be plumbed into this side of the dam as well. The rest of the wash water, including the final rinses near the end, can all be reclaimed and flow back into the underground tanks. Feeding reclaimed water into holding tanks is not recommended. The reclaimed water sitting in the holding tanks will become stagnant and start to grow unnecessary bacterial growth. Instead, we want to feed the reclaimed water directly into the pumps. This allows the holding tank above to become a freshwater backup or bypass should the reclaim system not feed reclaimed water. By simply adding a T connection and a check valve to the system, you can feed the reclaimed water direct, and if there is not enough water coming from the reclaim system, the gravity of the fresh water in the tank will push the check valve open and feed the pump. The reclaim system and tanking require the attention of the site work contractors, electricians, plumber, and general contractor. New Wave Industries is willing to assist in any way possible but the installation team of contractors is key to getting the tanking, plumbing, and electrical work done correctly. Hopefully this video has helped illustrate the requirements of a pure water reclaim system.